welcome to uh, square feet again on another episode and today uh, we can mean uh, uh, to discuss very important topic and very uh, uh, timely topic uh, that everyone wants to get information on which is how you can invest uh, your self uh, managed super funds into property and how you can uh, grow your property portfolio with the help of your self managed super fund to discuss that uh, today we have Dylan from Dream Wealth uh, as the financial advisor, and also we have Manjula Limitless Accounting uh, to to go through the accounting matters and how to set up this uh, super fund. And also we have Tikshana Somaratna, director from Billings Group. Uh, I won. Now I won. today uh, our viewers want to discuss how they can use their self-managed super funds into property. <laughs> Dylan, now on this discussion, firstly tell me. How does financial advisor come into the play? Because we have formed a consortium with uh, uh, Dwelling Tube as a real estate partner and Dream Wealth as uh, as the uh, s- uh, the financial advisor and the Limitless Accounting as the accounting partner. How how you look at uh, investing self managed super funds into property and what is your part on this? Sure. So one of the main things is to really understand what superannuation is and explaining to the client what super is. So usually what, um, uh, you know, working in this industry over 15 years, what I've found is uh, regardless of client's background, whether, you know, they might be accounting or medical professionals or uh, any job that they do, they think of super as something that's kind of out there. They yeah. never think it as an asset they, they can use. So something I've always told my clients and advise my clients is to think about super as a house or an investment property. So, um, and also which is funded mostly by the government and their employ, um, employers. And also, you know, that, uh, that, that is one of their biggest assets when they stop working. So due to the fact that um, superannuation is accessible only after retirement, um, a lot of clients think it's kind of like, you know, not something that's relevant for them. So my job as a financial advisor is actually um, helping them to understand, this, you know, this is a big nest egg that they have. How do you use it effectively and how to um, um, increase the savings so when they stop work, um, they have a really big nest egg that they can retire on. So basically, you're saying that uh, you can start controlling your super rather than allowing some other company to do what they want and look whether I'm going to get a benefit out of it. But instead of waiting, uh, you're saying, let's start controlling your own super and invest on the way you want and diversifying that portfolio. Absolutely. So uh, one of the main things is because um, people think it's kind of like, you know, I get I get access to when I'm uh, when I'm retiring. And also a lot of people have this, um, you know, there's this myth that they think super is shares. Um, when they think about super, the first thing that they think is shares. So that's not correct. Super is a very good tax structure. So um, as in any stra- tax structure, we can have control in the tax structure that they, that we have. So by using the funds in superannuation, we can actually have you know good good control, and also we can reduce our taxes. So superannuation is one of the best vehicles to reduce your tax. By understanding, for example, thinking about superannuation is like you know it's another house or an investment property. You change your mindset, and then uh, clients can get a lot of um, um, advantages by reducing their tax. That's great, actually. And I met a lot of clients uh, recently due to this COVID nineteen situation. When the share market drops, if they invested on a share basis on their super fund, they actually lost uh, you know large portion of their super. And what we are talking today is how you can sort of minimize that and getting the advantage of investing in the property market as a one segment. Mm-hmm. The always super has to be in a multiple um, diversified section, but we are going to focus on how you can invest on the property. And uh, I'll go to Manjula. Manjula, now you are the uh, certified tax accountant and you have wealth of experience of setting up uh, this self-managed super fund structure and putting the all the regulatory measures, auditing and all, you know, that this is not something that uh, people can uh, freely access once you set up the super funds you know you have there are so many guidelines that we have to do and you have to uh, you know obey and can you just give us a background of what you've been doing and how we can uh, come up together to help our clients when setting up uh, self-managed super funds sure uh, it's basically setting up a super fund um, it's not that difficult um, i'm working with uh, dylan also 
for a number of years. Um, so what we basically doing is set up the initial super fund. So we need to have a certain structure. Um, and also when it comes to the annual tax, you have to lodge your tax returns and you have to prepare your um, accounts for the super fund as well. So, um, and also you need to do the audit for the super fund. So it's basically our role um, is to manage your super fund um, in terms of doing accounting, uh, what sort of income is coming to the super fund and what are the expenses and, and then we calculate the tax and lodge your tax returns and so on and so forth. So that's basically our role when it comes to super funds. Wow, that's great. Um, okay, Manjula, now when you talk about setting up this fund, <coughs> yep. what sort of parameters we should look, look into? Like, is there a minimum amount of um, uh, super fund there we have to invest or what are yeah. the what are the parameters structures yeah it's it's basically self-managed super fund is owned by you so what we advise is you know if you have certain amount of money in your super let's say minimum at least three hundred thousand or more if you have in your super funds it can be with you or with your wife or you can have four members all together in a super fund so it's basically you need to have minimum 400, 300, 400,000 to start with the super fund. Because so basically four family members can put their individual super, super into, into one, one self-managed super fund and control mm -hmm. it. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So um, yeah, setting up is easy. It's basically you need to have a, a super fund with a trusty company, so which uh, we do uh, all the time. So it's it's very easy. It's basically. Uh, we recommend people to um, have a super fund if you have more than like 300,000 uh, balance. Um, it can be one person or up to four members in a super fund. So with, um, with purchasing a property, um, there are a few other things that come into, come into play. So um, super fund SMSF can't um, borrow money by itself. So we need to set up an additional trust inside the super fund called a bear trust. Mm -hmm. So this is where um, you know expertise come into play. It's very important because each state the bear trust um, requirements are different. So we need to make sure that the trust deeds are done according to um, which um, which um, state it's established and also which state where the property is being purchased. And also setting up um, corporate trustees, um, a trustee of the SMSF, we need to make sure that it's set up properly because um, the uh, SMSF at least need two trustees. So say in a situation where I've seen a number of times where husband and wife is not a as um, trustees, where uh, when Mandula set it up, usually it's always a corporate trustee where the, one of the main advantages is for one, some reason, if you know one of them were to pass away or for some reason they don't want to be a trustee of the self municipal fund anymore, yeah. the corporate trustee can um, still um, keep going as uh, uh, the trustee of the super fund without getting other people involved. So when you say, for example, if your uh, savings are about $300,000 and if you want to invest in a property mm -hmm. worth of $500,000, mm -hmm. so you need to borrow that $200,000. Yes. And normally when you borrow from a bank, they look at your uh, repayment capacity and the uh, deposit you have. Mm -hmm. So in, in a, in a, in a self-managed super fund, how is that going to manage? Uh, they look at the rental income as income? And yes. Um, look, I, it's not that different to um, purchasing a property in your name. So one of the um, best things in Australia that, you know, we, um, as I said before, a lot of clients, um, you know, disregard and they don't actually see where 10% of their income is automatically paid into the super fund. So anyone who's earning, right? Yeah. So say someone on a, you know, $80,000 or $100,000 salary, 9.5% of their income is paid to the self paying super fund. So that's nine and a half thousand on someone on hundred thousand dollar dollar salary. So that is taken as part of the um, uh, borrowing capacity right. when the bank um, establish how much they can um, lend. And also, if you're looking at a property, the rental appraisal of that property also can be considered as income. And then, based on all these factors, a lender can provide the rest of the money to buy the property. Uh, absolutely, and that's where it becomes so much easier. So. In, in a nutshell, this is the easiest way to acquire a property without using your own savings and your own cash flow. Yeah. And you can have the property tax-free at your retirement. Yeah. So this is probably the biggest thing that 99% of the people miss 
Yes. Um, I've seen this um, happening over and over again with business owners or even property investors. They have all their investment properties under their own name. So, um, you know, uh, jointly held or individually held, but not a single property is held through a self-managed super fund where at, at retirement they have to pay tax. There's no way of, um, you know, getting out of paying capital gains tax. So this is one of the best opportunities that a lot of people have missed. And that's one of the reasons I'm, you know, really... I'm keen with, you know, uh, educating my clients um, how important this is. So, Dylan, now actually uh, we are so uh, proud of uh, forming this consortium because uh, we've been in the real estate industry selling properties and I have still um, seen a lot of people having lack of information on how to set up a uh, self-managed super fund and buying properties and what are the advantages. And it's a very good point that you're coming up and saying uh, when you're retiring, if you sell the property, there's no tax. So and otherwise, there's, uh, there's if, a you, if you to buy it under superannuation. If you buy it under superannuation. Yeah. When, when super fund comes to the retirement stage, which is usually over 60 years, when you become more than 60 years, usually super fund becomes, you know, we can make it as um, a pension phase super fund. And after that, when you sell uh, any property in the super fund, there's no capital gain tax. So you don't have to pay capital. It's, it's, it's really... It's a huge, uh, huge percentage sale. of... Yeah. I mean, normally, uh, uh, we normally get, if you keep the property over, you know, two years, more than two years, you get a 50% reduction, but the rest is subject to, to taxes. Tax. That's right. And this is 100% no taxes. Absolutely. And even, even before retirement, say, you know, if you bought a property and then if you held it over 12 months, still the tax is 10%. Ah, right. So oh, still, good one. you know, yes. compared to someone who's earning, you know, at the highest marginal tax rate at, you know, um, you know for nearly 50% with, uh, with Medicare and everything else. So you are losing a significant amount of the capital gains that you make for taxes. But in this situation, it's only maximum is ten percent if you held it um, over hold it over twelve month period. Yeah. And Dylan, um, uh, this applies to the rental income as well, right? Say, say for example, someone has a portfolio in mm -hmm. under their self managed super fund, yeah, a uh, few properties, and after their retirement, whatever the rental amount they are getting as an income, that will be tax free as well. Uh, absolutely. So if they after sixty, and as Manjula said, after sixty, and then they've retired. Yeah. All of the income is tax free, and all of the capital gains are tax free. Yeah. Right. So this is a this is a huge opportunity that you can have more money at your retirement. Say, for example, let's take an example. If you have a property at forty five years of your age, if you bought under your name, if you're selling, um, you know, when you're at 60, sixty, and you are liable for taxes. But uh, if you bought that under self managed super funds, and it's zero zero taxes, and also after sixty. Whatever the rental income also zero in uh, tax. So you, you won't pay any tax in the super fund. Yeah. Correct, and this is this is the opportunity that we want to highlight with this consortium because now as a real estate partner, Dwellings Group, we um, our job is to find the right and suitable properties, and there are regulations uh, on uh, properties as well, uh, Dylan. If you highlight that, what is what is what is the requirement? You can't go and buy any property for self managed super fund. There are some guidelines uh, set by the government what properties are eligible to buy under self-managed super fund. Look, absolutely. It's like with any strategy, getting advice is very important. And um, one of the main things is it's um, it, it has to be uh, on a single contract. And you can't do sub things like, you know, subdivision and, you know, getting plans and permits and improving the property and that kind of stuff. So there are a number of um, legislative requirements. Uh, it, it's quite strict. So it's usually it's um, you know like a townhouse or an apartment or um, a house and land package with a you know single single contract um, or an existing dwelling as well on a, on a single contract. With each stage of the self managed super fund, it's kind of important to uh, identify what sort of a property is 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 um, is usable. Like say if someone is in accumulation. Um, uh, in, with a salary sacrifice, um, say someone's you know, doing the maximum contribution, which is $25,000 a year. So say husband and wife put $50,000 a year. So at 15% you know, tax, that's a $7,500 tax that's um, paid. On a normal circumstances, if it's paid to your industry super fund or in another super fund, 
that tax is gone. You can never get it back. The beauty of a sales plan is super fund is, say if you bought um, a relatively newer property, so within the first seven years, there's a lot of capital gains, sorry, um, depreciation um, component that there is. Yeah. So that 7,500 can be claimed as part of the depreciation. Right. So effectively, not only you are paying less tax because of your, um, you know, your salary sacrificed into the self paid super fund, which reduces your taxable income, whatever the taxes that's paid inside the super fund, you get it back as well because of the depreciation benefits of claim it. that. Yeah. Claim that. So, so I'm giving you a long answer to a short question. So <laughs> at um, income stream phase, though, we might, client might need to look at, all right, what put the property could potentially give me um, the highest income? So at that particular time, it's not necessarily about getting the biggest amount of depreciation or biggest amount of um, you know tax amount back, but what property gives me the most income. So the strategy and the property type needs to change based on where the client is at. Right. And Manjula, now you are an accountant. So in a normal investment property scenario, someone purchases under their own name, still we claim depreciation and also whatever the expenses of managing that investment property, for example, agency fees, uh, if there are any renovations, if there are any maintenance yeah. and all these things are part of uh, claimable, uh, you can yeah. claim those things. Yeah. And how it differs to the self-managed fund, is it same or, you know, um, you can um, claim, still cl claim all these yeah. things? So when it comes to the super fund, the still the same scenario. You get all the rental income as your income into the super fund and you can claim all the expenses, all the related expenses to the uh, property uh, as expenses and then you pay tax um, on the remaining profit and you still pay only 15% tax even before the retirement. Right. And also, this is also, if you think of a very simple scenario, it looks like another account, but you can't take any money out of that. It can pay the expenses of the property. It, uh, the income will come into the same, same, account. same account. As accountant, yeah. you are keeping an eye on that account that, yeah. that yeah. The, the owner is not doing anything outside of the regulation. Yeah. And you're auditing at the every, every year. That's right. So auditors will look at all the um, accounts as well, but you have to be very mindful not to do any personal expenses or anything like that in that super fund account. And it has to be basically the super fund related expenses. Of course, you can claim all the rental related expenses. It's like a normal account, normal yes. bank account. You can so, see the, the how funds growing every day and access to that account like you're seeing yeah. your super balance on a uh, regular super fund uh, as well. So it's like your access exactly. to the yeah, bank you account. You have related. access to everything and you basically manage the whole thing. Um, when it comes to the industry super fund, someone else is managing um, your money. But when it comes to this one, you have all the bank accounts. You have uh, you can access to everything, and if it is a property, you can have a look. So it's uh, under your control. And that's a very important point, Dylan. Also, exactly. you know, <laughs> when you have a property, you can have a look. But when you have your self man, uh, your super funds with uh, the popular super uh, company. You can see the screenshot of the balance that is you don't know where your money actually invested. But this is a f physical asset that you can see it is tangible. And even any scenario, even the stock market crash, at least your, your asset is there before you can see it. It's not wiping out anything. So how you feel that that uh, opportunity? Look, I, it's, it's one of the biggest things. I, I prefer the self-managed super fund option to compare to the other super fund, as I said before rather than thinking something like, ah, oh, you get a statement at the end of every financial year telling you how the super fund's done and how much you've got. And that's where the distance is created between that um, amazing, you know, nest egg that you can do so much with compared to getting the full control of the funds that you have and then have a really diversified portfolio where you can really see and touch and manage on a daily basis so that you know at, at your retirement, this, for example, if it's an investment property, this is going to be yours. And it kind of incentivizes people to do salary sacrifice and you know reduce their taxable income further rather than one of the key things that I hear from a lot of clients that I've you know seen over the years is they are quite hesitant to put money into superannuation because they think they can't, uh, it's something that uh, someone else manages. Mm. So if we know that they are, they are managing the fund, yeah. yeah, and then they have control over it. And they, for example, especially if it's a property, they know at some point they can sell it and it's theirs. So that gives a big incentive for them to salary sacrifice, which really reduce their tax um, over time. And also, 
I mean, if you look at the uh, ordinary scenario, you can drive through your property knowing that it's yours and it's in managed by my self-managed super funds. I never put any money to buy this. It's it's my super did it. But uh, when my retirement comes, I can sell this or I can refinance. And in, even within once you pur purchase the first one, once the capital growth uh, have materialized, you can use the equity to buy another one under the same fund, right? So yeah, th that basically we because it's it's different through um, self-managed super fund. The the loans are non-recourse. Mm. Um, so because of it's set up through different structures, so through bear trust. So one we need to set up a bear trust in general for for so each, each and every property you buy. Yeah, correct. And at the same time, purchasing um, super funds through property, it's the mindset and the strategy is a little bit different to investment property. So. For example, um, non-super assets which you buy in your own name outside super, this is the um, a really good strategy where we, you know, you target capital growth and you keep creating equity and you buy, keep buying more and more properties. But superannuation, I always advise my clients to um, uh, uh, increase their wealth, but at the same time, not by um, borrowing more and more, but but by paying off their debt as quickly as possible, because with their by salary sacrificing and then. Um, by paying off their debt by superannuation guarantee contributions and the rent, what I, I encourage them to do is pay the debt as much as you can. So, for example, if someone's 45, um, if you get a loan of 25 or 30 years, by the time 30 ends, it's nearly 75. Okay. So, most people won't retire when they are 60 or 65. So, you only have like a 15, 20 year window to pay that loan off. So, um, by paying that loan off, say someone start with 300000 they potentially could end up with a house that might be worth, I don't know, 700 or $1 million with no debt. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to get a superannuation up from 300000 to a $1 million within 10 or 15 years without putting significant amount of their own money into the fund. So uh, uh, that way they have a asset that's growing in capital. But at the same time, we are reducing their debt. So at the end of the day, the day they retire, they have an amazing asset that's debt free. Right, that's great. And also the same example, after 60, if you sell that property, you don't have to pay any tax mm -hmm. and there's no mortgage as well. So the, yeah, that's the perfect retirement plan. Ab I guess. Ab absolutely, yes. And uh, which is great. Uh, and uh, Manjali, you mentioned now um, you can form a self-managed super fund by, you know, uh, with four family members, yes. up to four family members. Yeah. Say, for example, if they're in different age brackets, yeah. uh, if one person reaches 60, yeah. uh, how will that work? Uh, how do you, yeah. that person can sell his shares and get um, the it's, funds? It's, no, it's basically a single fund, single right. self-managed superannuation fund. Whoever comes into the retirement age, we can make him as retired. Right. And then we can still continue the super fund Okay. And his because each and every member has their own balance. Yeah. So whoever comes into sixty, will they can retire after that, but still they can be the members. Right. And the rest we can do you know whatever they want, and until they comes to sixty, and then also they can retire. So it's um, so in that case, if you are invested in a property, at yeah. that point, if one member reaches sixty, he can't sell that and take the funds back. Uh, it's it's basically if you want yeah so it's it's a member balance right it's a okay. member balance if you buy one single property mm. with four members mm. um, let's say the the property value is five hundred thousand and each member has the balance of like hundred twenty five so yep. the total fund balance is five hundred thousand but if the fund wants to sell the property it's different yeah. whoever is in sixty for his portion. He will get the capital gain tax free, but the rest will have okay. to pay the so tax. So you yeah. can still sell the property, but that person who person over is. sixty don't have to pay taxes, but others. But are, the others will have to pay. That's yeah. great. Then uh, that person can decide to continue on the fund and continue the the on the 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 the, the group until everyone wants to sell the property as well. Or yeah. uh, at any time you can sell, and the the person who reaches sixty can get the tax advantages. Yeah. Now that's great. So much of information. I think uh, for our viewers, uh, I want to reiterate, uh, we have formed this consortium to help you on this self-managed super fund investment as a one-stop solution. That's why uh, we are licensed real estate agents and licensed financial planners and certified accountants get together 
so we can start this process and make this process simplified for you and uh, Dylan one of the another uh, uh, myth I think it, it is very difficult to handle so much of regulations and setting up we will have a lot of problems because you already have super with the you know the, the popular large super companies getting the money into this self-managed super fund could be a hassle but those are all myths right how, how if you take an example if someone wants to set up this process how long it will take and maybe average you know it's it's what sort of cost in in mall in that in average purpose look um it um in, in reality if someone who's not experienced um who are doing it themselves it could be a lot of work because there are so many pieces of the puzzle that they need to get it right and they need to do it properly with there are um, regulations especially buying a property there are a number of regulations and timelines they need to meet with trust deeds so on and so forth but you know as professionals Manjula and I we, we do this on a regular basis so we guide the clients um, you know uh, when we uh, when we set up a, a self and super fund we basically undertake all the uh, work that goes behind the scenes so the clients basically do not get involved in um, uh, apart from uh, advising us on what their requirements are they don't get um, involved in day to day um, you know setting up the setting up the fund so in general it might take roughly about you know a month to set it up and the fund can be ready to um, um, be um, uh, you know at, at the capacity to purchase the property within i would say within 4 to 6 weeks mm -hmm. um, look cost really depends on what the the client's requirements are so it's a bit hard to say um, you know an average time that's the individual basis right so yeah. we can um, educate that on an individual basis for our clients uh, when they want to do so um, absolutely so it really depends on you know what their requirements are what their ages are what sort of strategies we use and be based on a number of things i think uh Manjula, I think time is running up for us uh, but this is a very interesting and very important topic but uh, we have formed the consortium with all three companies to help you out of this and uh, you can contact us uh, uh, at dwellingsgroup.com.au we have all the contact numbers and also we have created a specific page called uh, dwellingsgroup.com.au forward slash smsf so you can get all the details and send us an inquiry which you can get access to Manjula, uh, Dylan and ourselves together we set up this process we look for what are the best options and we guide you through the process of setting up your smsf uh, self-managed super funds and uh, thank you so much for being with us and uh, we'll come back on another episode and uh, for any questions please contact us we are more than happy to help you thank you thank, thank you, you guys. thank you thank you Yeah.